Welcome back everyone. By now, you all should have a good understanding of the state and effect hooks. In this video, let's apply that acquired knowledge to see how to fetch data from an API endpoint. One point you should know though is in the future, a new feature called Suspense would be in charge for data fetching. Nevertheless, using the state and effect hooks to achieve the same is a great way to solidify your understanding of those hooks. All right then, let's begin. The first step is to install the Axios package. You could use the fetch API, but I prefer Axios for data fetching. So in the project folder, run the command npm install Axios. Once the command completes, the package should be present in your package.json axios. All right, next let's proceed with our component. I'm going to create a new file called datafetching.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a function component. Next, let's add our imports. We need use state and use effect from React and also Axios. The next step is to fetch the data. For that, we are going to be using JSON placeholder. In the browser, navigate to https json placeholder dot type code or type icode.com and if you scroll down, you see resources. The first endpoint gives us access to a hundred posts. If you click on the link, you can see the JSON data. The URL is the URL we need to make a GET request to in order to fetch this data. Let's go back to VS Code and fetch this array of posts. First, we are going to create a new state variable const posts comma set posts is going to be equal to use state and we initialize posts to an empty array. Now let's create our effect to fetch the data from the URL endpoint. Use effect accepts an arrow function. Within the function we make our get request using axios. So axios dot get accepts the URL which is from JSON placeholder and the get request returns a promise. Inside then block, let's simply log the response and in the catch block, let's log the error if there was any. The final step is to render the list of posts in the browser. So I'm going to create an unordered list and we are going to map over posts and for each post we are going to return a list item where the key is going to be equal to post.id and the inner html is going to be post.title. All right, let's include this component in app.js and test it out. If you now head to the browser and take a look at the console, you can see that we have a response and the data property on the response contains the array of posts. Nothing is rendered in the screen though since we are not setting the state. Let's do that now. Back in VS Code in datafetching.js, right after logging to the console, the response object, we call set posts passing in response.data. This will update the posts state variable which will then be rendered in the UI. Let's save this and take a look at the browser. You can see that the post titles are now rendered in the UI but if you take a look at the console we have hit an infinite loop of data fetching. We want the data to be fetched only once on component did mount. And the way we achieve that 
is by specifying an empty dependency list to use effect. So the second parameter to use effect is an empty array. If we now take a look at the browser, you can see that the data is fetched only once and the same is rendered in the UI. So this is pretty much how you fetch data with use effect. In the next video, let's expand on this example and learn how to fetch an individual post by entering a post ID and making the get request on a button click.